Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Right here I'm just showing how we did the shift indicators last time. I wanted to put this on the screen so that we could see where we're starting from this time. If you need that, you can go ahead and go to the last video. I'll link it in the description and right here on the bottom. Okay, so to start I'm going to get rid of the old image and we're going to create our own RPM outline. I have a template already made. It's kind of a pain to, to get started on. I might make a video on that um, just so you can get the exact dimensions of it. But here I already have it done. So I'm going to add it to this layer, make sure that it's centered. Then I go to blending options, and I click stroke outline. I make it very thin, just enough so that it'll show. And before doing that, just make sure that you click the masking so that when you hit delete here, it keeps only the stroke outline. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and add whatever custom design we want the bar graph to look like. I think this looks good and simple, but you can definitely get more creative with it. This is just a quick little example of what could be used and would make sense in this application. Now that you have those created, hit new layer and then just fill it with a color. And then go to the background layer and hit delete, just like we did with the shift indicators. Now you can go ahead and move it, hit the masking button, and then you can delete it from the background. And then you can delete the original layer as well so that you don't have the white. And that should look like that. Now we can go ahead and export it. Just make sure you export it as a PNG file. Now we can move over to the NSP software. Now I'm going to start a new IC7 dash. Then new screen. And do a blank screen. Right click, hit add component, then hit image. Choose the file, you're going to have to upload it. Whatever you save the file name as, go ahead and upload that. Now we can expand it to fill the whole screen. I'm actually going to zoom in on the video just so that you can see the screen better. Now we can go ahead and add component. Go down to the horizontal bar just like we did for the shift indicators. Shrink it to the size that's pretty close. And of course you can change your colors. Since this is going to be a coolant temp, I'm going to make it so that the bar is like blue. And then obviously the warning will be red. Now that all the colors are set and we have in position, you can go ahead and label it and give it the actual channel relation. So you go to coolant temperature, hit OK. You can set the warnings and temperature displayed as whatever you'd like, whether it be Celsius, Fahrenheit. I'd really hope that they add a unit type of like cold versus hot for the coolant ones, but hopefully that'll be down the line. Now that's set when you hit simulation, you should do exactly what you put on the warning signs and the colors. Now when I did this, you can see that it went over the background layer. So that's where you want to change that Z position to one on the foreground one, and in the background you want to change to number two. This will put the bar graph behind the background image, which is why we had to cut out that design. I'm going to go ahead and remove the alarm so it's a little easier for you guys to see. Here's a little side quest. That's how you delete the alarms. I'm deleting them all just so that we have them, but you can always add whatever alarms you want in there. If you want a video on that, you guys can just comment below. Let me know. Now that we have the coolant one done, we can go ahead and choose another parameter to put on the other side. This one I'm going to do oil pressure. So here you're going to do the same thing as the other side, so I'm going to speed through it a little bit. Okay, now that those are done, I'm going to add a numeric label so that we can easily verify what each of these is designated to. So this one I'm going to put as oil pressure. If you click on text here, you can go ahead and change where the labels are, where the numbers are, what the numbers look like, the font. 
So you can go ahead and play around with that. You can go ahead and change the colors just like we did with everything else. I'm going to make it white and then the warning is going to be red. Now that I have it the way that I want it to look, I can go ahead and duplicate it and put it for the coolant side. Obviously you're going to again have to change what it designates to. So we're going to change that to coolant and then change the color to blue, just like we had for the bar. And we can go ahead and test that they both work. And as expected, they did exactly what they're supposed to. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Not super complicated, but it should give you a base knowledge on how to do any kind of custom graph or...